and welcome to Movies, Films, and Flicks. I am Mark Hoffmeyer, and joining me is a woman who would love it if Nat Faxon answered every single on-star call. It's Megan Hoffmeyer. Did you look at my notes? I have his name written down in all caps with three exclamation points. Well, it's just such a weird cameo, isn't it? Oscar winner, Nat Faxon. Oh, that's true. I, You know, I totally forget that he's an Oscar winner when I think about Nat Faxon. Where's Nat Faxon's Oscar? Ooh, is he one of the types that puts it over the toilet? Probably. Does he do that as a joke? Or do you think he showcases it because he worked really hard? Because, I mean... Because he won it for The Descendants. Yeah. And then he did Way, Way Back. Oh, such a good movie. Do you think he's proud of it? Do you think he stares at it while drinking cheap scotch and cries? <laughs> Why would he be crying? He should be <laughs> laughing and drinking scotch and just so pleased. Jim Rash made a splash at the Oscars a that splash. year. splash? When he, when he mimicked Angelina Jolie. I don't remember that. Hmm. So this is really weird that we're talking about Nat Faxon, but in Ready or Not, when Grace gets into a car and she calls, what? what's it called again? On Star? On Star or some you know yeah. movie version of it. Yeah, On Planet. Yeah, there you go. Calls On Planet, and it's him. And she's just, he's not, he, he says the car was stolen, he turns it off, and then she swears at him. He has such a memorable voice, too, so it's hard not to picture him saying it. Yeah, it's weird watching him come from... This, the Broken Lizard guys from like Beer Fest and all those movies and Club Dread true, true. to being an Oscar winner. Dreams come true. Yeah, well, I mean, he is just so fun. I'm, I love Nat Faxon. So I brought you on for this, Megan, because our listeners, Movie Films of Flicks, they voted for this movie. This is our March movie of the month. This is what they voted for. They wanted us to talk about this film. And when they did, I thought the only person that has to join me is my wife, Megan. Now, when we were in the theater watching this in 2019... This was a very fun time. You and I, I think we were laughing a lot more than the people in the audience. So there's a scene in this movie where Grace has is playing hide and seek, but she gets a hold of an elephant gun with bullets that are the size of a cucumber. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's hyperbole, but go I with mean, it. I mean, those little you boutique cucumbers probably. Oh, I am sure there's a cucumber in this world that it's the size of. <laughs> but we thought when he got shot with, we thought that Stevens was going to get absolutely oh, yeah. destroyed. Like, I thought Stevens was just gonna... It's a good gag. Yeah, it's a good gag. And they build up to it for so long, because she's at the island, then he walks around. When she has that hero pose in the hallway, when she straps the bullets across her, and she's holding the gun, and she's got her sneakers on. Yeah, doesn't she look at herself, and she just, like, dang, or she, like, drops an F-bomb. She says bloody hell or something yeah, like that. She's like, oh, geez louise. Oh, shucks. Yeah, there you go. But yeah, she goes in there, and she has this massive gun, and this... And the Le Domas's bodyguard is sitting there, and he hears a noise. He goes to look around the island, but she moves. And then he looks again, she moves. All the while, you have a kettle brewing on the oven. Yeah, it's such a random thing for him to be doing at that time, too. Knowing that the whole family's walking around, murder on their minds, lots of random weapons, and he's making tea. Oh, maybe caffeine. So maybe he's going to fix them up with some nice tea. Sure. A nice pour-over. Who knows, <laughs> nice- man? Maybe nice. he's going to do them something, you know, get him some caffeine to, to kill somebody throughout the night. Enough fuel. And then she finally gets a drop on him and she pulls the trigger and nothing happens. And it was it was a letdown, but I kind of loved it, too, because the easy thing, I guess, would be a, to have exploded Stevens. Yeah, that whole scene does not go her way for a very long time. She tries to get out the door. It doesn't work. She tries to use the gun. It doesn't work. And they, they say, what were they... Um, what kind of rounds were they? Dummy rounds? Yeah, dummy rounds. Yeah, he's like, you think that I would actually allow for real rounds to be in these things? Mm-hmm. Which doesn't make sense. No, you would think that they would be real. I would think they'd be real. Stevens is the only capable person in this household, would you say? Their butler? The oh, Lado Mosses? Yeah, no, the family. Well, maybe maybe Aunt Helene. Oh, yeah, she Aunt Helene. She seems pretty scary. Aunt Becky is pretty good with that bow and arrow. Andy McDowell, the mother. Yeah, I, maybe she's capable. She just doesn't use her skills very often. Let's say you're a member of this family. Right. Oof. <laughs> what weapon would Tony, the the father, give you? So you're somehow in this family. Oh, what okay. weapon do you think he would hand you? Me personally, yeah. with my own skill set. Nunchucks. Nunchucks. Uh gosh, that's this is a tough question to be sprung on me. Something they know you. You know, they know they know who you are, and he's picking out for personalities. What weapon would they hand? Maybe either a gun or a machete. I'd give you a rocket launcher. Oh, that would be awesome. You want a, a machete? Oh, that's that's brutal. Well, because I feel like a knife would be too short, and then I'd have to get very close to someone. But a machete, you got some more length. You can sort of slash at things. You don't want, like, one of those heat-sicking missiles. Less work. What do you think they'd give you? Me? I got I got Smith & Wesson right here in my oh, fist. Oh, jeez. 
<laughs> That'd be terrible. Yeah, it would. Hey, Mark, go find her. Oh, gosh, I'd quit the family. So that's, what are those, that game that you had, the card game where you have to ask people these existential questions that are really hard to pick? Between? Oh, Chuck Klosterman did a hypotheticals. So I sort of think about this movie in that way. Would you want to be born into the family or marry into the family, not knowing what was going to happen to you? I mean, I guess it has to be born into it because you, you have your entire bloodline and you know if you don't let this person, if this person lives, all of you are going to explode into squishy bits. No, at, uh, this is a spoiler. At the end, and we'll go back to this because it's a great question, but okay. at the end, when they explode, like, where do all the ribs and skeleton go? I think they were just jellified. Just jello, a jellified explosion? Yeah, a complete explosion from the inside. Because all the goo that hits people is jellied. Mm -hmm. So there's no, like, if a rib flew out and stabbed somebody, none They're of that. They're full-on liquefied and then they explode. Oh my goodness. That? I mean, that's sort of what LaBelle's it looks like. not messing around. He really isn't. So what? He's... I don't know. But see, I also get this weird feeling about him. So I don't know if we should yeah, do go. this yeah. now or... So do you feel that he chose her to get ready or, or to get the hide and seek card because he knew that she would cause some sort of change in the family? He knew she was capable? That's, a, that's an interesting question. Doesn't he tip his head to her at the end after she kills everybody? Because he says good job. Yeah. He, he, yeah, he gives her like a nod. So that's sort of this feeling I've been having about the movie every time we rewatch it. I just get the feeling she was chosen. That's a that's an interesting question. That's a really good question. I feel like if Aaron from your next, I made you watch all those clips. If she was chosen, <laughs> then he would want the the um, the family, the Le Domases mm -hmm. gone because she would just murder all of them. But Grace, well, that's a good. That's a really interesting question. I mean, they've gotten lazy over the years, but he also. What does he get out of this deal? So he gave the great-great-grandfather a box to open. So they call it a Cenobite box, which is from Hellraiser. If you open up the box, the Cenobites come out, and then they yeah. rip you apart, and they're all in leather, and you get your skin ripped apart, and then you're tortured for the rest of your life. So that box is kind of like a demonic box. So I guess their souls? So all those people that exploded, their souls are, go are going to wherever Domas... Oh, no, not maybe, Domas LaBelle is from. Maybe he feeds on souls. That's very popular in... Um... In fantasy culture, you know, the gods want souls. It appeases them. Because they're, they're pretty vague about this guy. He met a dude, and then ever since then, they've been I doing... know, I have so many questions. So what happens to her afterwards? Is she just free? Well, she's going to jail. Well, no, I don't mean that. I mean, as far as the the spiritual aspect of the movie, I I mean, well, I mean legal they, consequences aside. They were trying to kill her. I know, and but... And all she did was survive. She didn't kill anybody, if but you think about it. But is she free of the curse Oh, no, now? she crushed a skull in this. Yeah, no, she bashed Andy McDowell's yeah. head in. Andy got smoked. Mc, McDowell, owed. Not owl. Andy McDowell. McDowell, owl. What do you think? Does oh, that work? Oh, yeah. That didn't work. I tried. You did? It was good, though. You know, you gotta break an egg to make an omelet. And I, you know, I broke the egg wrong on that one. And I don't mind. I mean, it would be a pretty complicated omelet if you didn't ever break the eggs. How... That's a really interesting thought. Which one? <laughs> I don't know. We're going to... So we, there's about four we're juggling right now. <laughs> but what are the consequences? Is she free? Yeah, she must sudden? be. Because he gave her or... a little head nod. Okay. From what... Like... Does he somehow work with her now? What? How does this box work, by the way? I have a question. They talked about other cousins in the family that died because they didn't do the thing and they all... The game. They all just died. So does the box sort of just magically show up with that family member do upon wedding like, day? Do they ship it to them? Do they overnight it? With insurance? Yeah, do they send them a courier? Or maybe they offered it to them, and they're like, no, we're not doing it. Maybe Stevens drives it over, yeah. flies it over personally, one of the charter jets. So yeah, yeah, they. So if a family... So it's interesting, though. If a family member doesn't play the game, then just that family dies, which is interesting. Mm -hmm. Well, otherwise, this guy... Not the entire guy, family. I mean, this guy, I guess, is sort of like an eternal jokester. He would have no entertainment if everyone just died at once. Yeah. So Maybe he was sick of them. I would have been. Because they're kind of dumb. Yeah. They were not good at what they're doing. And they're very selfish and they're mean. Maybe he doesn't like what they're using his money and fortune for. I think, yeah. This, I have this lots is what of conspiracy theories about this. I think the only per people he likes are probably Daniel, played by Adam Brody, and then probably his wife, Charity. Because they both have an interesting thing going on. They kind of hate each other. But Brody's... He's so well. He the, clearly saved her from something dark that she won't talk about. They allude to it several times. Yeah. And they have a remember that scene where she's like, "You're you're weak." 
But then he hands her the drink and she just takes it. And there's like a com- they're comfortable together, mm-hmm. which is they seem miserable together, but they're comfortable. They're like college roommates that just tolerate each other. But that's a testament to the directors, what Matt Bettinelli, Open, Tyler Gillette, and then the writers, Guy Busick and Christopher Murphy. And then also the other producing guy the, the, of Radio Silence, Chad Valella. So it's it's Matt, Tyler and Chad. They're this group called Radio Silence. And then the guys who wrote the script, Guy and Chris, I think that's a all these questions we're asking. We're not given much. I don't think the questions that we have are bad questions. No, they're fun questions. Yeah, they're fun questions. It it makes us want to know more about the universe and what's happening there because we like it so much. I think good movies do that. And I think bad movies make you ask questions you shouldn't ask. They make you poke holes in the plot. These are not plot holes. They're just more like, what's the extended universe like here? Yeah, And it's weird, though. In this extended family, there are... I mean, there's character growth from Adam Brody's character. Which is... You know what's weird is that you, John, and I, we did John First Body. And then David... Cross and I did Scream 4, so we've covered all of Brody's recent horror films. Oh, that's fun. Adam, MFF, AD. I really enjoy Adam Brody. But he, he, he has the best, he has the arc in this. So Grace, played by Samara Weaving, she's excellent, but she just kind of gets really, she just oh, wants she's a just family. Being screwed over. Yeah, she wants a family at the end. She just, and what I like, I like what Samara Weaving said is she didn't want to be the girl that gets lucky and kills somebody, or it's a fluke. She wanted to be, but she, she's not Aaron from your next. Who's just oh, wiping okay. people out. So she's in the middle. She's not, ah! Yeah. But she also, you know, no, she it's chokes. it's more like, ah! How is ah! that? Ah! Ban- it's a banshee <laughs> scream. And she said that's just, it cut, it's an anger scream is what she called it. But yeah, so she's not, she's not getting lucky and running away, but she's not going on the straight up offensive. But she moves out of the way and she gets stabbed. She takes out Stevens with the sash from her dress. Like she's mm-hmm. tough. And she like, kicks him in the face with her yeah, yellow chucks. Yeah, she's a survivor. She's scrappy. Yeah, yeah. She's definitely wants to live. She's not a survivalist murderer. So here's my thing about Alex. I don't understand why he doesn't do something to warn her. Why doesn't he just discourage her from getting married? Why he doesn't he convince her? Yeah, I know she wants a family and they've told us all that. But why didn't he do more to preserve her life? Well, he's just a spoiled brat, though. And I think the movie shows that. Remember when... It, like at the end, he's like, "You're just not going to forgive me now." And I then, guess... he, and then, remember, he, he's like, "Well, I didn't want you to leave me." So he brings a woman to potentially die because he didn't want to tell her the truth. So he's. I guess I just I like Grace, and I feel like Grace is a good person. So she wouldn't have chosen a bad person to marry. He just hid all that stuff. This could have been. He must be different when he's not near his family. This could have been a plot line from Crazy Rich Asians. This could have oh, gone that way. There are Imagine about. That. 49 plot lines per book in Crazy Rich Just Asians. imagine that, though. She goes back and then she has to sort of do um, Michelle Yao's chasing you. Oh, jeez. That's frightening. Be done. She's legit Aquafina scary. gets in there, becomes an action movie. She could be Adam Brody. Yeah, I see that. Dark but funny. But he's good in this, Brody. He he's has so a, good. He, so I guess in the beginning of the movie, it's it's they go they go to a flashback and it's Daniel and Alex and they're running. Daniel's older brother. As little boys. Yeah. Daniel's older brother, Mark O'Brien's the younger brother, and this guy runs around the corner with two arrows in him. And he's like, hey, help me out, Daniel, help me out. And Daniel's like, he's in here. So then Daniel hides Alex in a closet. Alex sees Doma. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he sees it. And then, uh, but Daniel's the one who is basically responsible for killing a man. And he knows it. So, I mean... It seems like something they train the family members to do because in throughout yeah. this movie, the maids constantly call out when they see her. The little yeah. children try to hurt her. or So they're the obviously stuff, yeah. trained in this way of life. And what the maids are reading to the kids, too, are is like, you will be strong. You will do this. <laughs> but, I mean, this Brody, I don't know. He, he You're a kid, though, even if you're trained for it. And you know you, like, when, yeah. when, when shit gets real... It got real when he was a kid, so he probably was a mess, and he knew what would happen. Well, he seems to be somewhat sensitive at his core, yeah. even though he puts up a front. But he even told, right? He told Charity, this could happen to you. Mm-hmm. Like, he before they got married, and she's yeah, like, I don't exactly. care, I want money. So he's, like, in the movie, yes, he, he turns on her a co- two times, right? Well, he sees her once, and he's like, I'll give you ten seconds, and then he knocks her out. And then but, he gives her about 39 seconds. Yeah, and then he gives everyone acid and they start spews. Sp- oh, that is so amazing. He said they're going to be pooping weird. Pro- Didn't he say something like that? He's like, yeah, I think it's hydrochloric acid. <laughs> 